But guess what, Mr. Speaker? You don't get an award around here for simply doing your damn job. Look at what MAGA extremism has gotten you. Nothing. Nothing. Not a damn thing. At every critical juncture in this, 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 in this Congress, it has been Democrats who have been the ones to stand up for our country and do the right thing for the American people. Democrats have done the job that Republicans have refused to do. Though they're in the minority in the House of Representatives, Democrats once again stepped up to deliver for the American people, this time to provide the votes necessary for critical foreign aid legislation when spite and stupidity fractured the Republican majority. And then a prominent Democrat gave an awesome speech in which he called out MAGA Republicans for their spite and stupidity and told Republican Speaker Mike Johnson that he doesn't get an award for simply finally choosing to do his job. And it was glorious. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, we have several clips to look at in this video, and we're going to read an article which recaps the situation. Jim McGovern is a prominent uh, Democrat who is an excellent rhetorician. He's an excellent debater. He serves on the Rules Committee, and he's had some stellar moments, particularly with respect to President Biden's impeachment and just calling out Republicans for their dysfunction and chaos. We'll get into exactly what Democrats did here in terms of providing the critical votes necessary uh, for this foreign aid bill. But I want to play this two minute clip from Jim McGovern, because to me, it's just pitch perfect in terms of the words he chose, in terms of how he delivered it, because rather than do what a feckless Democrat would do and congratulate Republican Speaker Mike Johnson for finally allowing these long delayed foreign aid legislation to ba basically make it to the floor. Jim McGovern actually takes an opposite approach, and he says that Mike Johnson doesn't deserve an award for doing his damn job. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? You don't get an award around here for simply doing your damn job. President Biden told us last year, six months ago, over six months ago, that this was urgent and important, that Ukraine needed us, that Putin was not going to stop, that the war against the Ukrainians was particularly vicious. Every major human rights organization in the world has to told us uh, the impact of Russia's attack against Ukraine. The Senate voted months ago. The Senate can barely agree on what to have for lunch, and they voted months ago. And what did the House do? What did my House Republican friends do? Nothing. No action to help our allies. It's all delay, distract, deny, and blame Joe Biden. Now, I would just say to my colleagues, look at what MAGA extremism has gotten you. Nothing. Nothing. Not a damn thing. In fact, it has empowered Democrats at every critical juncture in this, 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 in this Congress. It has been Democrats who have been the ones to stand up for our country and do the right thing for the American people. Democrats ensured the U.S. didn't default on its debt last year, in case anybody forgot. Democrats supplied the votes to keep the government running in September of last year, in November of last year, and in March of this year. Democrats supplied the votes to pass the National Defense Authorization Act. Democrats supplied the votes for the tax relief bill that passed earlier this year. Democrats have done the job that Republicans have refused to do. And again, we have different priorities, and, and I think based on what I've heard in this last Congress, different values. That is an excellent speech. Again, I love the tone. I love the approach because too often I think that we're so we, – we lower the bar so much for Republicans that when they do the bare minimum occasionally, they don't even do the bare minimum consistently. We feel inclined to pat them on the back. We did it with Vice President Pence, or many of us did with Vice President Pence, when he chose not to try to unilaterally overturn a free and fair election and install Donald Trump into a second unelected term. Uh, we do it with Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger when they speak out against Donald Trump's fascism. Um, and people might be inclined to do it not only with Kevin McCarthy when he was speaker and, and offered a continuing resolution, uh, which ultimately caused him to be removed from his uh, position. But now Mike Johnson as well. And um, I, I do believe in acknowledging when people do the right thing. But in this case, Mike Johnson, as um, you know, Jim McGovern pointed out, Mike Johnson 
gave us a six month pointless delay in foreign aid to Ukraine that they sorely need ultimately to basically just wave, you know, the white flag, right? To, he, he's doing now effectively what he should have done six months ago. And it may have made a colossal impact in the prosecution of the war. And all, the only reason he did it was to try to appease his unappeasable base and stick it to President Biden politically. So I agree. Johnson's not a good person. Johnson's not a good speaker. Johnson doesn't deserve praise. It was Democrats who got this done. And do I believe that Mike Johnson should be protected as speaker if uh, Republicans uh, come for his position? Only if, only if Mike Johnson actually gives concessions to Democrats. So Dem if Johnson wants to keep his job, I think it's fair for Democrats to protect him if Johnson bends the knee on critical issues and is a good faith partner the way that Kevin McCarthy should have been. But I digress. So here's what happened. The House on Friday cleared a key procedural hurdle in passing foreign aid to Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan, despite dozens of Republican defections, with Democrats helping Mike Johnson avoid a stinging defeat. Soon after, a third Republican said he would join a threatened move to oust him. That's Paul Gosar, by the way, who is just nuts. The chamber voted 316 to 94 to advance the bill, setting up Saturday votes on a final passage of a $95 billion in foreign assistance that has been held up in a political fight in Washington, D.C. So. Again, like the, this tweet, for example, from Matt Fuller, who's he's a reporter. I was going to say the Washington Post. I'm sorry, the Daily Beast. He says, I've been highly critical of Mike Johnson's fecklessness on Ukraine aid. So credit where credit's due. If his speakership ends next week, and it very well might, Mike Johnson will always have this moment right here. Again, I don't think that Mike Johnson um, should get an award for this, but I will play this clip. This is when he basically tries to spin what he's done in allowing these foreign aid bills which were languishing under his speakership to finally make it to the floor to a vote. He tried to spin it as, uh, you know, this this was the soonest we could get it done. And this is really an act of principle when, in fact, it's just Mike Johnson finally caving to the political reality. Why are you willing to risk losing your job over this Ukraine funding? Listen, my, my philosophy is you, you do the right thing and you let the chips fall where they may. I, I don't I, if I operated uh, out of fear over a motion to vacate, I would never be able to do my job. I, look, history judges us for what we do. This is a critical time right now, a critical time on the world stage. I, I could make a, you know, I, I could make a selfish decision and, and, and do something that, um, th th that's different, but I, I'm doing here what I believe to be the right thing. Um, I think pr providing lethal aid to Ukraine right now is critically important. It was critically important six months ago. And he again, he pitches it. Oh, I have I have no fear of of losing my job. Otherwise, I couldn't do my job. Well, you obviously have fear of losing your job, which is why you haven't been doing your job. You've been trying to herd cats and again, appease the unappeasable. And the fact that you finally caved to the reality six months later, again, I'm with Jim McGovern. You don't deserve, you know, a a an award for this, which is also why we I mean, we won't play the clip, but Jay Tapper of CNN asked Johnson about this. And again, he tried the same thing with Tapper. He's like, well, you know, it takes time to socialize and come to a consensus on these things. I have no evidence whatsoever, and I don't think Johnson's presented any evidence that he has meaningfully persuaded Republicans to vote for this foreign aid package who weren't prepared to vote for it six months ago. The only thing that's changed is he has accepted that he may face a motion to vacate from his far right flank. I don't know of anybody who's come out and said, you know what, six months ago, I wasn't going to support this, but now I am. And by the way, there were enough Democratic votes to get that foreign aid to Ukraine in the first place. So Mike Johnson had a way from the very beginning to have a bipartisan solution to this issue. Some Republican votes, some Democrat votes to get Ukraine the foreign aid it needs. Instead, he dithered because he didn't want to face losing his job. So I think that McGovern's speech was just awesome. That, I think, is the posture to have, especially in an election year. As McGovern points out, it's Democrats who delivered time and time again the death ceiling crisis, which could have potentially ruined this country, far worse than even a government shutdown, even though Republicans contributed at least as much to the debt that was potentially going to default. Republicans didn't want to do anything about raising or halting the death ceiling, even though they did it multiple times under Donald Trump, right? They engaged in brinkmanship, and it was Democrats who ultimately delivered the votes necessary to avoid a painful default, which would have crippled the economies in blue states and red states. It was Democrats who, again, delivered you know, the votes necessary to avoid a government shutdown on three different occasions, et cetera, and so forth. Democrats, even from a position of being in the minority, a position of nominal weakness, 
As McGovern points out, they're the stronger, more competent party. They have better leadership qualities. And this is something that Democrats have to consistently hammer home as the election approaches. Republicans do not deserve to run a lemonade stand, let alone even one branch of the United States federal government. Love that speech. Let me know what you think in the comments.